back. Welcome to something, safe to say, pretty different today. I'm actually down on Eastbourne Beach. Reason being is that I've just, I'm at a, a wedding this weekend, back up in Windsor, actually outside of London. But I've been down to Hailsham to pick up a tent box, which we'll show you maybe a little bit later on. And I thought, well, I'm only, I'm actually going to meet a lot of fish South Wales in a couple of days as well after the wedding but I thought well I'm literally 10 minutes from the front it would be rude not to get myself down to the to the coast and just have a couple of a couple of casts and just see if I can pull something out so I've blasted down I've actually I've got well four new toys really I've got two brand new T800s and two casting specials I've been meaning to get um, a couple of multipliers because I never I don't use multipliers that often but I thought right I'm just gonna go and get a couple that are just basically good all around us so I can fill them up with 15 pound line or I can fill them up with 30 pound line and it'll do the job so nipped into Tony's tackle sort us out with 40 nice nice worm actually these see the coming wraps so I'm gonna get these raw I've just had a couple of casts with that reel and the rods, well, and one rod anyway. So I'm just gonna get a couple of rigs belted out, see if we can get a place, because I'd love to get a place. So first rig on this rod, I'm going for a loop rig. And I'm just hooking that panel up like so, pulling that up. I'm in a massive rush, because it's half five. It's probably a couple hours in the car to Windsor. I don't, I mean, I've got the postcode of where I'm staying, but. I've never really been there, so it's all just feels slightly kind of haphazard to be honest, but nice loop rig. The nice logos actually, six ounce gripper. I'm not gonna go too too crazy on the casting as both these reels are identical reels, but God, they're not identical when you get them out of the box in terms of their speed. One was really fast, the other was slow. So I stripped the bearings down on both of them. Two drops of red oil, rocket oil on each one. I haven't even done the usual and seen which way the tide's going. It is going out, which isn't ideal, but to be honest, the gradient of this beach is quite steep. So I'm gonna get this one out, get, get some baits fishing, and then have a quick mess around with the other rod and the other reel. Right, so let's go. Right, I've got a feeling that the tide's running from right to left. So I'm gonna put it slightly to the right. I haven't even, one thing I've forgotten, I usually get a bit of bike in a tube to use as a bit of a grip for me multipliers, but been rushing so much. I'm just gonna do a short kind of laid back cast here. because I've got quite an angle, quite a gradient on this beach. God, it's weird casting with a glass tip rod. Something I'm not really used to, so we'll just see how this goes. I'm just gonna take it fairly gently, not go too crazy. Oh, that reel's quick. That reel is quick. Yeah, I feel like I maybe pulled into that a bit too quick. Feels like I was just kind of hitting fresh air a bit. I'm going to have to, God, that might have to slow that reel down with a bit more oil. It's very quick. But anyway, I've got bait in the water. Let's get the other one sorted. <sighs> Tell you what, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to have to get used to glass tip rods because especially i mean i bought them to fish with braid actually for the hounds during the summer mainly in the clean ground marks so i'm sure casting with braid will, will feel a bit harsher but casting with mono it's strange like it just it feels like i need to slow everything down by a second or so which doesn't sound a lot but in the context of casting a second is quite a lot actually so what I'm doing, other than getting my fingers covered in iodine from these worms, which is going to be interesting when I'm sat at a table full of strangers at a wedding tomorrow, they're going to think I'm a right wrong one. But basically I've got a, that other rig was a two, a loop rig, two hoop loop rig. Why is it that people always go right next to you when you're fishing? 
There's nobody on this beach, literally nobody. Anyway, this is a two up, both panel. I'm getting two of these worms on. Tony's given us 40 worms, but I'm gonna have to fish quite hard to get through them because I haven't got that much time. So I'm just getting both of them on. These are cracking place baits, these like really nice. And a little clip that I like to use, it's, it's probably one of the most old school GoPro just switched off there, so I'm not sure how much of that you got, but this is a two hook up, two above, two up clipped, two hooks above the lead. And I'm not sure if you could, if you saw that, but I like to use one of those old fashioned bit of telephone tube and a bit of rig rubber you can buy from any tackle store. Just nick that little bit in with a pair of pliers. When the rig, when you cast, it'll stretch and that'll automatically just come off. So you can just pull that down dead easy and the beauty about these is if you have to cut your hook length because it's in a fish or you get snagged or you just need to tie a new snood on because it's got a bit worn you don't have to be precise because that'll just move and it's perfect right i'm just going to give this one a bit of a flick we'll get this one out and then i think to be honest i'll uh, i'll wind that other one in so that's the rig two hook clipped up six ounce sinker just going to give this a light a light flick another just fairly short short drop just another little laid back just right tides drop quite a lot we're on a set of pretty big tides at the minute so i'm just going to let plenty of line out and just let the sink and the mono do its job it's quite windy, but the beauty, uh, the beauty of these groins is the beach there is probably three foot above, so I can just get tucked in. I've got about four foot of clearance coming above my head, so it's, it's quite pleasant, actually. I feel my gear getting pulled quite quickly there, so... Of course, the beauty of these glass tips is that they just sit nicely in the tide. That other one's gone quite slack, actually. Let's just investigate that. Right, let's see if we've got anything here. Don't tell me I'm snacked. Oh no, no, we're coming. It's actually a bit of weight on that. Don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of a bend in that rod. Now, of course, I'm not used to using glass tip rods, so definitely feels like there's something. Well, I've just seen something break the surface out there. We have, we've got a fish. And the other line has just gone incredibly slack. We've got a little pin whiten, so the blank is off. Little whiten. God, this other line's on the deck here. Give us two minutes. No, I'm not feeling anything, so get that other one back out, see what happens, but fish in a new mark, never fished here, got his fish, saves the blank doesn't it? Right, so you can probably see I've moved a bit further down the shore, so second rig, again loop rig, I like to have my hooks nice and close to each other so both the baits are close and streamlined, let's get it out, I really really want to catch a place, that's what I've come for, Very short laid back cast. Oh God. Thought it was gonna be chilly. Absolutely no chance of that I'm boiling. I feel like shortening that drop is just helping us to get into the get into the rod a bit more. So I definitely think with a longer a longer drop, especially with mono, it's going to be a case of really winding it up and slowing everything down. Shouldn't be as harsh with braid. Hey, come on, let's get a place. Got to say, those glass tips do sit nicely in the tide. A lot better than my uh, HSTs, which I do love. But there's definitely 
stating the obvious here, I know, but there's definitely more tidal fishing in mind when these have been designed, I think. I don't know if that right-hand rod's just getting a little bit of interest there. My gear seems to be moving to the right all of a sudden now. Probably makes sense to check the tides. I've actually just seen a couple of turns diving. The first ones of the year, but then again, we're 300 miles further south here. Tide is going out to 10 past six, low water is at 25 past eight, and it's a 0.48 ebb. And I'm told by Tony that that's a pretty big tide, or long tide, as they call it down here. It's probably a terrible Eastbourne accent, but you know what I mean. So yeah, long and short tides rather than big and small down here. I haven't been trying to impersonate Elvis either. I just saw myself on the screen then. I've got a quiff like Swiss Tony from the Fast Show, if anybody remembers him. There's a little, little bit of weight on this. People go on about the, um, the mag dial on these casting specials getting in the way and I can't see. We've got something on here. I can't see what they mean. What have we got? Ooh, it's a flatfish. It is a flatfish. Is it a place? It is. It's a place. Get in. It's what we came for. Granted, it's a very, it's a very spent fish. It is spring, but it is a place and he's absolutely nailed those hooks. Look at that, look at the markings on that. Brilliant, eh? It's a long time since I've caught one of these and that's what we came for. Very, very thin fish. I don't know if you, hopefully you can see that there. Really, really thin, totally spent. He's absolutely nailed those hooks as well, so. Try and, try and unhook them with minimal damage, but yeah, I'm very, very, very happy with that. On the new gear as well, new mark, never fished here. Nice one, Tony, sort us out with a bait. Really pleased with that. Right, let's get this fella back. On, off you go, mate. Yep, he's away. So the hooks I'm using are very, just pull that out, pull that off. Very small, size one O's, fine wire, Aberdeen, pretty long shank. And I think for this, I'm just gonna put a single worm on, because I am, I've been putting two worms on, on each hook, but I'm notice I am burning through them a bit, actually, so. I mean, I'd rather have plenty sent out there, because I've not, as I say, I've not got much time, but... And that is pretty much it. Perfect little place bait. Right, let's get this one clipped up. And you can see there, the clip's moved up the, up the main line. Just push that down a couple inches. Clip that on. Pull it into place. And it just keeps it neat while you cast. That's the sort of item you used to see in Sea Angler about 25 years ago, but... Like a lot of things in fishing, sometimes simple is the best way, and if it works, don't change it. Good job, I checked those, check that. Absolutely nothing left on there. Don't know if there's crabs out there or pin white and just pulling it around. So just have to be mindful of that. Tell you what, it's pretty it's pretty pleasant, comfortable and easy fish in this. I'm probably literally less than a minute away from the car. You don't need waders, there's plenty of depth. You're not getting snagged. And you can just sit with the butt here, rods right next to your box, so you can just sort everything out. 
definitely the sort of fishing I'll be taking up when I'm too old to clamber over rocks and God knows what. Although it does look very ominous over there towards Eastbourne Pier. Seems to be holding off here, but don't really want to get soaked. Right, this rod's been in a while. Let's see. There's a bit of, bit of weight on that, not a lot. There's definitely some weight. What have we got? Yep, there's a fish on. In fact, I think we've got a bit more than we bargained for, yeah. A lot more than we bargained for because actually got a double shot of place. Well, how about that, eh? That bottom one's a better fish. Look at that. Just hooked in the mouth as well. Lovely. A slightly smaller one, but that's a better fish, that bottom one there, definitely. Marvellous. I did think that I'd seen a small rattle on there earlier. And obviously, obviously I had. He's beautifully hooked him, just right in the mouth. Still a very thin fish, but lovely colours. Lovely to see that. Big, nice orange spots on them. Let's see if we can get his mate unhooked as well. Crosswind coming over my shoulder now. There must be a bit of sort of mud or something out there. Because it's taken a little bit of force to get me to break me sinkers out, but it's possibly also why there's a bit of place out there as well. Tony did give us some directions and I think I've followed them. And seems to be paying dividends. Right, time is really beginning to tick away here. We've got a little bit of weight on here. I think each rod's probably going to have one final chuck. Oh, definitely got something on here. We've got place number four. Not the biggest of the day, but another look at the spots on that. Hopefully you can pick that up on the camera. And luckily, it's just, just hooking the scissors. So he'll go back, get another couple of worms out, see if we can get another. So, four place. And a white and can't be bad, eh? Let's see if there's anything on this one. Mm, possibly not this time. Well, I was wrong. There was something on. A tiny little pin white. And so that's two of these we've had. And four place. And get two more worms on. And then I'll have to split. Just slip hooked, I'll get them back. I've got to say, even though it's all been a bit rushed and 100 mile an hour and it's about to rain and get dark, I love fishing new places that I've never set foot on where you just turn up, fish and see what happens. It's obviously easy to say that when you're catching a few fish, but there's nothing quite like the buzz of fishing somewhere new, for me anyway. Part of the reason I bought that uh, tent box actually just to be able to get away and shoot off wherever. It was, I have to admit, inspired by Nathan Slippy Limpets. I was away with him last week, uh, last week, last year, and he had one. I was like, mm, that looks very, very convenient. 
It is getting dark. What time is it? 10 to 8. I'm going to give these another five minutes and then I'm going to wrap up. But it's been a really enjoyable session. Feels like a massive bonus considering at five o'clock I nearly didn't bother, but I'm glad I did. Right, the lights have just come on along the prom here. It all looks very nice, but it's getting dark and I haven't got a headlight. There's like a sort of dr drizzle as well. Nothing on this. So I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. And shoot. Right. That's it. Final whistle is blown. I don't think we've got anything on that. Right, well, nothing on that one. I don't know this place at all, but I suspect the tide dropped too far. It's about 80, 90 yards out. I'm seeing white water. There's obviously a sandbar, which is maybe where that mud's been stirred up, so possibly a high water shot. Anyway, it's been a great little bonus session. I did fancy coming down trying for a place. I've managed to do that. Tony at Tony's Tackle. Tony Kirridge sorted us out with some cracking looks. So cheers, Tony. Quick, short and sweet session. Chris and the new gear, four place, two white, and it's been good. And it's just about to start raining right as, I'm, as it's getting dark, so I'm going to wrap it up. As always, hope you've enjoyed. I certainly have. Thanks for watching. Tight lines. We'll see you in the next one.